This is Outside the Cage on the Mike's On app, on CBS Sports Radio, on everything that we are on. We are on so many different platforms, radio.com. Uh, we are being joined right now by Terrence Crawford. He's fighting Amir Khan April 28th. Uh, 28th? Jeez, April 20th on uh, MSG, at MSG. I just was, we were talking a little bit off air, and I was like, you know, let's just start the freaking interview. What is more important to Terrence Crawford today? You're 34-0. You're undefeated. Is it the venue? Is it keeping the, t- the title? Is it the, uh, the opponent? What to you drives you to, to be so dominant in the ring? Uh, what drives me to be the best in the ring is to fight the best uh, welterweights possibly uh, out there to fight and be crowned number one in the division. That's what drives me to be the best. Does your does your opponent change that at all? I mean, listen, you you've honestly you you've you've beaten up. Um, you're 34 zero, and you've you've won every single fight. Without a question, there's never been a doubt at all, uh, you know. But does your does your opponent? You're already talking about your your following po- opponent, your, your Errol Spence, possibly coming up next. Uh, you know, is it? Do you look past a guy like Amir Khan, or are you just uh, what you have your sights? Not at all. Not at all. I, I don't look past anybody. Like I said, my main focus is uh, Amir Khan. I'm not worried or even thinking about Errol Spence right now. Um, I'm 100% focused on this fight that's in front of me, and um, that's it. Again, we're being joined by Terrence Crawford. Terrence, with one R, don't get that wrong. Uh, Terrence, what the hell's your social media? I, I ch- uh, checked Twitter. It says Bud Crawford 42 is gone. Uh, do you, did you update your Twitter? Um, not yet. It should, it should be the same. Are you retweeting porn, man? What the hell's going it's, on? Your no, account's... Not, not, <laughs> It's Terrence Crawford. It's Terrence Crawford. I apologize. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, dude, uh, is am I correct that this fight is going to be your first fight in your third weight class, or have you uh, already established a, a couple wins in your third weight class? Yeah, this is my third fight in a welterweight division. Well, how's it been, man? Like, Do you like it that uh, maybe the gas tank's a little bigger, that you could beef up a little, eat what you want on fight week? Uh, take us through, uh, dude, jumping through three freaking weight classes. We can't even get Floyd to fight Canelo at a higher <laughs> weight. You're jumping through all these weight classes, man. It, it's pretty amazing, and it's kind of like being a boxing pioneer, in my opinion. Uh, uh, take us through uh, being a heavier welterweight now. Oh, man, it feels, it feels good. I'm still... Uh... Growing into the division, um, I feel good. I feel strong. I feel fast. I feel energized. So everything is uh, going great. And and to give credit to Floyd, he started at 130 and went all the way up to 154. So he had his share of moving up in weights at the same time, too. Bear with us, man. We're the MMA guys. We're learning the difference between boxing and MMA. There's like the 20-pound gap in MMA between weight classes. Boxing, it's four or seven pounds. It's pretty crazy, man. I think MMA is going to catch up. But, uh, uh, dude, uh, strategically, watching some of your highlights and some of your fights, man, I've never seen a boxer switch stances so much. We see this in the mixed martial arts world with taekwondo and kickboxing, the switching of the stances. Uh, Do you feel comfortable on both legs? Of course, of course. That's something that... uh... I've been doing since I was a uh, young kid, and it just stuck with me and the professionals, and um, I kind of mastered it. When do you when do you choose to to switch? When do you, do you look at your opponent and do you if you see that that uh, you know the unorthodox approach is is actually having more effect? Do you would you stick with do you stick with that longer or do you just continuously change it up as much as possible and you don't really you know just to to flow through the fight? Not at all. Um, it's just in the moment, you know. Uh, it just depends on the moment. Then I just decide whether or not to switch or not. You know, I want to get back to it, Terrence, because we were talking about the, the the weight, the different weight classes. You know, a lot of a lot of these fighters walk into you know different weight classes with after like a hard weight cut, and it, their energy seems to be taken out of them. Do you see a difference in a heavier weight class where where you're not cutting as much weight that you are more effective? Uh, you can say that. 
What's the just said that. what's the what's the difference? What 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 is actually a di- the difference for you as far as do you feel like a you're all there? You you haven't had to suffer a weight cut because that's what a lot of the fighters say. Um, I don't know. I don't I don't know how to how to say it. I'm more energized uh, as as well, but I don't have to focus on losing weight or having a training camp. Losing weight, you know, I can pretty much eat a little more than I normally um, fight week. I'm more, you know, relaxed. I'm not putting too much stress and strain on my body by taking too much weight. So um, I'm good. Yeah, man, you don't put too much stress into anything outside of the ring, man. You're a very laid back personality. Uh, Terrence Crawford on Twitter at Terrence Crawford. I found you, man. One R. Um, dude, Bob Aaron in the, uh, I believe it was the initial press conference in January. Uh, I think it was in the UK. Uh, he compared you to Sugar Ray, man. And I think Sugar Ray would, uh, he also said that he, you could potentially beat Sugar Ray. In my opinion, man, I think Sugar Ray's style, his flashiness might get you, uh, out of your element. Uh, how, how do you not, uh, I don't know, get flustered by trash talkers or somebody who's styling on you in the ring? Like, how do you stay focused? Cause dude, if I'm Amir Khan, you're, you're, Ten times the skillful fighter that he is right now, uh, he might try to bully you, man. He might try to use his uh, bigger size. He might try to use some experience, some uh, old veteran moves to get you flustered. Uh, have you prepared for that? Of course, but at the same time, uh, by you being a bully, you gotta withstand the punching power at the same time. So you know. Um, what does that mean? I like never... the bully would be marching forward, and you're gonna counter him. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take risks being a bully, right? You know, um, we're not bullies, man. You, <laughs> we watch you guys. No, you guys be the bullies. When, when, you, when, when the bully, when the bully is being a bully, he's normally, you know, the bigger man pushing the little guy around and walking right, through right. the little guy, you know, showing the little guy that he's the bigger, bigger fighter, you know. But at the same time. If that little guy can punch, then how how is your bully tactics gonna work? You know, is you gonna take that punishment all all rounds, or you know, are you gonna resort to something else? You know, so we ready for whatever. We're not we're not uh, focused on if he's gonna try to bully me or box me or whatever. We're gonna be re- re- ready for whatever he brings to the table. Did Conor McGregor kind of try to uh, try and fail to be the bully man with doing like that hook, the cross hip, and then these rabbit punches? Uh, I know I'm switching gears here, but uh, again, we're we're mostly the MMA guys, and that was our boy against uh, the boxing world, and we had to defend him. I just didn't appreciate that Conor wasn't focusing on the flow, the in and out, the boxing. He was more of trying to bully man. Is that what you saw? No, not at all. I, I looked at the the Conor. You talking about with Mayweather, right? Of course, yes, man. Yes. Did you watch any other Conor fights? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, you could have been talking about Khabib. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> hey, but, uh, he got bullied no, in that man. too. <laughs> that that fight, that fight, uh, Mayweather, Mayweather, uh, and McGregor. McGregor was doing more boxing and countering. He wasn't really being a bully. He was trying to use his height and his reach to his advantage, in which he had some success in uh, the earlier rounds. I believe he caught Floyd with a couple of counters coming in because of his his range and his uh, height, his willingness to pull pull back uh, orthodox. So, uh, no, nah, I didn't sense him trying to be the bully at all. Again, we're being joined by Terrence Crawford. He's fighting Amir Khan, April 20th, Madison Square Garden on pay-per-view. Um, you know, Terrence, the one thing that we've seen recently, and this is goes for both worlds, the the MMA world and the boxing world. It's it's boxing is is again reaching another height, you know, and MMA is is still trying to catch up, um, but it's making a good attempt. You know, the two worlds collided: Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor. But now all of these um, these these streaming sites are starting to kind of gulp up fighters or promotions. You know, you're still holding down the pay-per-view events, um, but are you, you know, are you, do you see the effect that it has on boxing that, you know, there's a DAZN out there, 
that uh, other promotions are trying to, you know, to, to scoop up. ESPN obviously still signs up a lot of fighters and stuff like that. But are you seeing the difference that these promo other promotions that you're streaming uh, to, to watch fights, did you see a difference at all uh, with the uh, in boxing? Well, boxing is uh, not dead. You know, a lot of people uh, would say boxing is dead because of MMA, but I, I believe, you know, boxing is well and growing even bigger. You know, you got it on national TV now, free TV. You don't have it on premium no more, so uh, more people get to see it. You know, when you go to a Buffalo Wild Wings or any sports bar, you know, they normally got ESPN or some sports channel uh, playing while you sitting down eating or having a beer or something. So boxing is normally on by those people sitting down and watching it. And that gets a lot of people back into boxing that uh, normally – wouldn't be watching boxing because it'll be on HBO or Showtime. Yeah, no, the fact that Fox is back with with boxing is really huge too. I mean, there's a lot of networks that are really taking hold of this opportunity, which is great to see. Because again, combat sports in general, it's not it's not just it it doesn't make like again we're more MMA guys, but we don't care to see one do better than the other. We want them both to kind of like if possible ever unify would be fantastic if we could both live on the same platform and both share the wealth. Um, but but we like to see it all succeed. And we see, you know, guys like, you know, Conor McGregor making the, the leap to boxing. You know, do you see any boxers that you're tight with? I mean, you listen, you know, you're, you know, Conor, you know, the Khabib fight. But would you ever uh, attempt either to fight a boxer? I mean, I'm sorry, fight an MMA guy in the boxing ring? Or would you even ever contemplate even going in to a, an MMA fight? Uh, not really. Uh, I mean, they don't pay MMA enough. They don't. They, they don't do. They don't. That's a huge difference, man. You just nailed it right there, Terrence. You've been in boxing for a long time. You know how much money you get paid. MMA's been yeah. been doing this for twenty five years, and they still don't get paid. That's why Connor's trying to quote unquote retire due to the fact that he's trying to make a buttload of money, and they can't afford him right now. It's they can afford him. They just taking on the money. Ah, uh, I feel you on that, man. <laughs> you know. Uh, a lot of people always ask me that because, you know, they used they know I used to wrestle and stuff like that. They always ask me, Wait, what you think about MMA? And I always tell them, you know, they they don't pay enough. You know, uh for me to be putting my life on the line and getting my hands and feet and everything broken and kicking and all that stuff, I I gotta get paid. It sounds you know, exhausting, man. Now, yeah. now on the uh, the red carpet for Creed two, um, I'm not gonna ask you a review. I, I heard Creed one was better. I still haven't seen any of them. I have to see it. But uh, dude, you mentioned that uh, Mashad Bektik. Is that right? Is that your guy? Your MMA guy? Yeah, that's my that's my guy. How you do know, you guys know each other? Guy. He's foreign, right? We we, we train we train together. He he lives in Nebraska. When he came from Bosnia, he moved to Nebraska and. Uh, yeah, we've been training together for, man, I would say nine years. Wow. Uh, Probably a little more than that before he was even professional. Obviously, you know, so. obviously, he's just picking up your boxing, right? You're not in there, like, mixing it up with jujitsu or kickboxing, right? Actually, believe it or not, he was a boxer before he converted to MMA. <laughs> we took him away he, from you. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, before I even knew him, um, he had he had boxed when he was younger, and he was uh, just getting back in the MMA. He was actually an amateur in MMA, but I never knew he boxed until uh, a friend of mine had told me that they had fought when they was younger. Uh, so, yeah, he he was a boxer before he was in the MMA. This is my last question on MMA with you. Uh, you know, because you are uh, uh, the, one of the best boxers out there, my friend. Can you outbox any MMA fighter out there? I mean, is there which if there's is there is there is there one guy you're like I would actually he might actually challenge me. No. <laughs> 
Oh, man, dude, I had, come on. I hear the gym stories. Andre Ward speaks up. Nate D is amazing. Uh, I mean, I guess it's just different when you lace up the heavier gloves. Uh, dude, Terrence, again, thank you for the time, man. Uh, can't wait for your fight. Hopefully we get you in studio on fight week. My last freaking thing, dude. Uh, have you fought an MSG before? Yes, this is my third time fighting there. Have you headlined it before? This is my third time headlining. <laughs> well, Terrence, if you put on amazing performance against Amir King Kong, I believe if you get the win and you, you do it in a dominant fashion, if you get the win, man, you will be hands down the unanimous number one pound-for-pound pound boxer in the world. Do you feel that pressure? Do you want that number one spot over Lomachenko? No pressure, no pressure. I feel like I'm already number one, so there's no pressure. Beautiful. I love that. I love that. This guy's awesome. You beating Sugar Ray back in the day? <laughs> you said what? You beating Sugar Ray back in the day? I'm beating anybody back in the day. I'm not going to say you're going to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> love it, man. Appreciate it. Terrence Crawford, looking forward to an April 20th American MSG pay-per-view. Thank you so much for the time, and good luck, man. Thank you.